Now, in this part of the presentation, we're going to be addressing the vast amount of evidence which suggests that West Africans had travelled to America long before Christopher Columbus made his successful voyage over 150 years later. The influence of desert travellers, trade, Muslim technology and science such as celestial navigation, i.e. the use of the stars for travel, and African nautical techniques had accelerated the development of the Malian navy. The Malians, i.e. from people from Mali, had exceptional boats which could travel long distances. Taking advantage of this strength, 200 ships were instructed to sail west from Africa in the direction of America. This is 181 years before Columbus attempted the same voyage from Europe. One ship returned from the African expedition to America. The sailor told the, told, told the tale of violent currents. He turned back and the others continued. Now, the Arab Egyptian scholar Al Umari quotes Mansa Musa as follows. The ruler who preceded, preceded me did not believe that it was possible, impossible to reach the extremity of the ocean that encircles the earth, meaning the Atlantic. Now this was told to Mansa Musa, who is still the richest man who's ever lived. He's from the area of Mali, and he was the emperor at the time. Now we'll continue. And wanted so this this uh, this, the, this the ruler who preceded him wanted to reach that end, i.e., the end of the ocean, and obstinately persisted in the design. So he equipped two hundred boats full of men, like many others, full of gold, water, and victuals sufficient enough for several years. He ordered the chief, i.e., the admiral, the, ad <laughs> the admiral, uh, not to return until they had reached the extremity of the ocean, or if they had exhausted the provisions and the water. They set out. Their absence extended over a long period, and at last, only one boat returned. On our questioning, the captain said, Prince, so this is the captain of that one return ship, speaking to Mansa Musa, Prince, we had navigated for a long time, until we saw in the midst of the ocean, as if, were, as if a big river was flowing violently. My boat was the last one. Others were ahead of me. As soon as any of them reached this place, it drowned in the whirlpool and never came out. I sailed backwards to escape this current, but the Sultan would not believe him. He ordered 2,000 boats to be equipped for him and his men, and 1,000 more for water and victuals. Then he conferred on me the regency during his absence. So this is Mansa Musa's brother transferring his leadership to Mansa Musa in his absence. Mansa Musa's brother is looking to explore the ocean to the west and he basically passes the throne to Mansa Musa and departed with his men on the ocean trip, never to return nor to give a sign of life. The, Mala the Malian king at the time, Mansa Abukari, left with another 2,000 ships to sea for himself and also never returned. According to the 14th century uh, Syrian historian uh, Shil Shibab al Omari, Abu Bakr was obsessed with the Atlantic Ocean and what lay beyond it. Historian Ivan van Santima. Uh, according to historian Ivan San Ivan Satima, 101, 181 years later, after arriving on the shores, um, Christopher Columbus describes finding African metal. So even when African, uh, even when Christopher Columbus travelled to the Americas, he describes seeing African metal. Van Satima cites the abstract of Columbus's log made by Bartolome de, de las Casas according to which the purpose of Columbus's third voyage was to test both the claims of King John II of Portugal that canoes had been found which set out from the coast of Guinea, i.e. West Africa, and sailed to the west with merchandise. There are also claims of the native inhabitants of the Caribbean island of Hispaniola, um, or Hispaniola that from the south and the southeast had come black people whose spears were made of a metal called guanin, which 
from which it was found that of 32 parts, 18 were gold, 6 were silver, and 8 were copper. Also, American villages with Malian names such as Mandinga Port, Mandinga Bay, Sierra de Mali were also discovered. Two Negro skeletons were found in the Danish Virgin Islands dating back to 1250 AD, over 200 years before Columbus's first voyage in 1492. In Reef Bay village, African uh, Timfangi script had also been found. Similar facial markings and sculpture, sculptures have also been found in Native American tribes that are also present in West African tribes. So we're starting to see also some cultural transference. Examining the navigation and shipbuilding, cultural analogies between Native Americans and Africans, the transportation of plants, animals and textiles between the continents and the diaries, journals and oral accounts of the explorers themselves, Eve Ivan Van Satima builds a pyramid of evidence to support his claim of an African presence in the New World centuries before Columbus. Combining impressive scholarship with a novelist's gift for storytelling, Van Satima recreates some of the most powerful scenes of human history. The launching of master boats in, or sorry, the launching of the great ships of Mali in 1310, 200 master boats and 200 supply boats, the sea expedition of the Mandingo King in 1311, and many others. If they came before Columbus, or in They Came Before Columbus, which is a book written by Ivan Van Zatima, and many others, um, we see clearly the unmistakable face and hampering of black Africans in pre-Columbian America and their overwhelming impact on civilizations as the civilizations that they encountered. The evidence is there. What we want to do in history is trying to prove or suggest beyond reasonable doubt. There will also there will always be doubt in the evidence which is provided, but what we can see here is enough evidence to suggest that there is a high probability that West Africans were already communicating with America. As well as this, we also know that we have found, as from our previous um, for previous uh, from the previous parts of the presentation, we also know that there has been tobacco and cocaine found in Egyptian mummies, which is an American, well, cocaine and tobacco come from American plants. Once again, indicating that Africa has been aware or communicating or traveling to and from America for some time before Columbus.